I don't know about you, but I've always had trouble with nitrates in my aquarium. Like in the beginning, I had way too much. And then now I have too little, like what's going on? Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips for busy fish keepers like you. And if you have heard of the aquarium nitrogen cycle, link over here, you know that fish poop generates toxic ammonia, which turns into toxic nitrite, which then turns into less toxic nitrate. Like no one on the internet seems to be able to agree how much nitrate is considered lethal to fish. Um, some people say, oh, you know, don't go above 10 or 20 ppm nitrate. Some people say 50 ppm. Some people say zero because the less is the best. Um, and I think the reason why there is so much confusion about this is because the lack of research on it. Like researchers do studies on where the money is and the money is in agricultural fisheries that raise up fish for food and even there the numbers seem to really vary from species to species much less nobody is going to do a study like that for aquarium fish that costs like a few dollars in comparison so i did a little bit of digging and i was able to find one paper that studied guppy fry so guppy babies and the lethal level of nitrate was 200 ppm sorry ppm is parts per million and that means for me personally at least i try to aim for either 75 ppm or 80 ppm nitrate if i see that level i'm definitely going to do something about it back when i was a beginner i made the common mistake of having too many fish in my aquariums meaning they were eating a lot they were pooping a lot and that produced a lot of nitrate so every time that nitrate would creep higher and higher uh, I mean, the fastest way to remove nitrate is to physically remove it. So you basically, I would do a giant water change, physically remove the old, dirty, nitrate-filled water, and then replace it with clean tap water. However, you guys know me, I'm busy, I'm lazy, and I don't like having to do 50% water changes every single week. It takes so much time. But then I discovered the magic of live aquarium plants. Now, the reason why I didn't start them earlier was just because as a beginner, I was really afraid. Like I was still learning how not to kill fish and then having to take care of another kind of living thing, plants just was overwhelming. But eventually I got to the point where I was comfortable enough to try them and amazing. Basically the plants consume all of those toxic nitrogen compounds and use them to produce new leaves and roots. I got to the point where I had so many plants in my aquarium that I basically always had zero ppm nitrate all the time, which sounds great because that means I don't have to do water changes, right? Except now I had a whole crop of other problems start to appear like lots of algae growth and now my plants are dying. What's going on? Turns out the plants do need nitrogen to grow. Like it is a basic building block and if you don't provide it, the plants start losing their leaves and the tank gets all out of balance. And if you don't know what that means, I have a whole tutorial over here on what it means to balance a planted aquarium. But in short, what I ended up doing was lowering the amount of lighting period I gave to the plants, which means they didn't grow as fast. If they don't grow as fast, they don't eat as much nitrate. So how do you make sure you have enough nitrate to feed your plants? Well, I highly recommend you get some kind of all-in-one aquarium plant fertilizer that basically contains all the necessary nutrients and minerals that your plants need, and you don't have to think about it. Now, I personally use the Aquarium Co-op Easy Green all-in-one fertilizer because full disclosure, I work for them, so I get an employee discount. <laughs> but I also like the fact that it has a lot of the major macronutrients that plants eat a lot of, which is nitrogen or nitrate, phosphate, and potassium. So every week or two, I do a quick and dirty test with these kind of test strips that tell me how much nitrate I have in the aquarium. And then according to the Easy Green instructions, I should dose up to 50 ppm nitrate. For my aquariums, I personally try to balance my lighting, fish load, plant load, etc., so that I measure about 10 to 25 ppm nitrate each week. Then I can dose the Easy Green up to 50 ppm, and then I know that my plants have their fortified breakfast, they've got all their necessary macro and micronutrients they need. So essentially the nitrate test is a fast and easy way to guesstimate how much food my plants need to be fed. 
Bottom line, if your aquarium only has fish and invertebrates in it, no fish, then it is fine to have zero ppm nitrate. However, if you are keeping a planted aquarium of some sort, the plants do need some kind of nitrogen source. Now I shared um, the easy green fertilizer that I use, which they recommend 50 ppm nitrate. However, if you are using some other type of fertilization method, or maybe you're relying more on nutrient rich substrates to feed your plants, this number may not be right for you. So do your research. I'm just sharing what I personally do and what's worked for me in the past. Now I will admit, Easy Green is not the only fertilizer I use, but I didn't want to cover it in this video because this one's mostly focused on nitrate. So if you're interested in part three of my water chemistry series, we're going to talk about plant nutrients and I will post it here once it releases. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.